Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about five reasons why you should as well as five reasons why maybe you might not want to buy an electric car. And a big thank you to Progressive for sponsoring this video. Now obviously buying a car is a major financial decision and you want to make sure you make the right choice. And switching over from something you're used to to something that's all electric can be quite intimidating. So in this video we're going to focus on five major aspects of that buying decision. Cost, convenience, charging, driving, and something that gets a bit controversial with electric cars, the environment. So first, let's start off with perhaps the biggest deciding factor on buying a new vehicle, cost. Now, it's a complicated subject, but there's a pretty simple short summary. If you're purchasing an electric car new, it's going to tend to be more expensive. This is for several reasons, a higher initial purchase price, potentially higher insurance rates, and also potentially heavy depreciation. Now, is it a massive difference? Not necessarily. I plugged in the numbers for a Hyundai Ioniq Hybrid, plug-in, and electric, and the total amount spent on the car, insurance, for which I quoted myself for each vehicle, and fuel and electricity, ends up with the plug-in offering the best overall cost over five years. Also, comparing the five-year cost of ownership on Kelly Blue Book, which includes factors like depreciation, state fees, as well as maintenance and repairs, reveals the plug-in is the cheapest to own, though the fully electric car is only about $700 more total over five years versus the gasoline car. So realistically, because of the low maintenance and energy costs of running an electric car, they can end up being actually quite similar in cost to a combustion car if purchased new. But what about used cars? Well, here's where the advantage can often switch to electric cars, and often this is due to depreciation. So for example, let's say you have $13,000 to spend on a used car. Well, with a quick online search, I found a 2016 Volkswagen e-Golf with only 20,000 miles on it. Another quick search, and I find a gasoline-powered 2016 Golf for $13,000, but with 40,000 miles on it. Now, you might be concerned that the e-Golf is used and the battery might fail. And that's a fair point. And so my personal recommendation, unless you're getting a really great deal, if you're going to buy an electric car used, it makes a lot of sense to buy one in warranty. In the case of our 2016 e-Golf, the car has an eight year, 100,000 mile battery warranty. So we know we have at least four years or 80,000 miles of battery remaining, absolute worst case. On the other hand, engines can fail as well, and the gasoline-powered Golf only has one year or 20,000 miles of warranty remaining. But let's assume both cars are trouble-free for four years. Well, over four years, the e-Golf will save about $1,800, which is significant. Now, there's a few factors that can change this number significantly. So the more miles you put on your car, if you're driving well over 12,000 miles a year in your car, you're gonna see more savings going electric. If you don't put many miles on your car, it may end up being cheaper remaining with gas. Also, if fuel costs are low, our Golf scenario is basically a wash if gas is at $2 a gallon. But if your current vehicle has terrible gas mileage, then switching over to electric can have huge benefits. So ultimately, which option will be cheaper is dependent on many factors, and you'll have to look at your personal situation to know what's best, given all of the parameters that may affect your total cost of ownership. Now, cost is not everything in purchasing a vehicle. If cost was the only thing people looked at when buying a new car, then none of the luxury brands out there would exist. And so personally, I believe that if you're going to spend more money on a vehicle, it should be more convenient. You should never spend more for something less convenient. And often this is used as an argument against electric cars, because if charging an electric car is super inconvenient, well then why would you wanna spend more for something that's less convenient? But in reality, the argument is exactly the opposite. Electric cars, given the right circumstances, can be significantly more convenient. So here's the two most critical things to think about. Number one, do you or your family live in a household with more than one car? And number two, do you have a place to charge a car? If the answer to both of these questions is yes, then often you'll find having an electric car will be more convenient. If you don't have a place to charge a car at home, it doesn't mean you can't own an electric car, but it's typically going to be more of a hassle than a gasoline vehicle. Anything for around town driving, easily up to 200 miles a day, is no problem for many electric cars out there. But what about road trips? Well, here's the thing. If you simply wanna drive from one point in the US to another point in the US, 
it's no problem. I drove my Tesla on a 2,000 mile road trip and didn't have any issues going point to point. You'll spend more time at chargers than you would pumping gas, but if it's a rare trip, it's not a massive sacrifice. And it's not just Teslas that can do this now. The Electrify America network is allowing a wide range of other electrics out there do the same thing. Having a charger at home though, you'll be surprised how quickly you enjoy the switch because every time you leave your home, now you have a full charge. You never have to worry about range anxiety if you're just driving around town from your home. It's always full every single time you get in your car. And that's something I didn't really realize until I owned it. And now what's kind of weird is when I get in my gas car and I see, oh, the fuel is low. It's like, oh great, now I have to add another stop onto what I was about to do because I have to fill up the car. With an electric car, if you have the right charging setup, you never have to worry about range at all. You're always full every single time you leave your house. So my order would go, one, does your household have multiple cars and a place to charge? Yes, definitely have at least one of the cars go electric for all around town errands and work commutes. Scenario two, do you only have a single car but a place to charge it? Well, in this scenario, a plug-in hybrid with 30 to 50 miles of electric range makes perfect sense. A lot of your mileage around town will be electric, and if you need to drive further, you can without the delays associated with charging. Scenario three, do you only have a single vehicle and nowhere to charge it at home? Personally, I wouldn't recommend an electric car yet, as it will likely be quite inconvenient. Now let's dive a little deeper into charging, as this is often one of the biggest concerns with electric cars. So if you have a place to charge at home, a standard outlet like this one can charge at a rate of about four miles per hour, four miles of range each hour. So if you come home, you plug in the vehicle, if it sits on the charger for 10 hours overnight, you've added 40 miles of range. Now that's not a lot, but in many scenarios, it's actually enough. And you may find that you often have more than 10 hours a day to let it sit, depending on how you use it. You can also install a level two charger like this one here, which is good for about 30 miles of charging each hour. At this rate, no matter how much I drain the battery down during the day, it's always going to be full the next morning. The cost of getting one of these chargers installed depends how far away your electrical box is from where you want the outlet to be. You can expect to pay about $400 if it's right beside the box to upwards of $1,500 if it's a fairly lengthy, complicated install. The challenge is when your trip is no longer point to point. So if you wanna get from one spot to another spot, you can do it no problem. But if you're driving across the country and you wanna hit all the little stops along the way and take back roads and take little side trips and explore along that road trip, well, that's when it starts to take a lot more time investment planning the trip so that you can get to chargers where you need to. And that's where it goes back to that convenience factor of not having to worry about it using a gasoline car and it being a much less stressful thing over Overall. Can it be done with an electric car? Sure, sometimes it can, but it will be significantly less stressful, especially when you start getting out in the middle of nowhere. So a quick summary, charging at home is great. If you need to move across the country, it's easy. However, if you're looking for a road trip vehicle, gasoline cars are still more convenient. Now, what about driving an electric car versus driving a gas car? Well, there's actually a good number of advantages. Electric cars tend to have a lot of torque and they tend to have low centers of gravity, meaning most of the weight is down low. So driving an electric car is generally actually quite fun. They're smooth as many of them don't have transmissions that shift gears. They're quiet as there's no engine noise coming into the cabin. Now enthusiasts may not like this, but your average driver will probably enjoy from a luxury standpoint how quiet the ride is. And the rides are often really good. Electric cars tend to be heavier, which isn't great from a handling perspective, but larger, heavier cars can offer advantages in terms of ride quality. Another huge advantage to electric cars is being able to preheat or pre-cool your car right from your phone before you get in it. Most plug-in hybrids and electrics will have this feature. Some combustion cars can do it, but obviously only if they're outside. You wouldn't want to start one up inside your garage to heat it up. Additionally, you'll get heat instantly in electric cars that use resistive heat rather than waiting for your engine to warm up and then provide cabin heat like you have to do with gasoline cars. On the flip side, cold weather climates can also play a penalty on electric cars. Because your heat comes from the battery, electric cars tend to have significantly less range in cold weather than in warmer areas. You could see as much as a 40% drop in range depending on conditions. 
This also ultimately means your battery won't last as long if it's charging and recharging more often due to reduced range from cold weather. So from a driving perspective, you get quick, quiet cars with a solid ride and instant heat. On the flip side, a gas car gives you better range in cold climates. And if you're into the sound of engines or shifting gears yourself, well, those are subjectively fun elements that gasoline cars offer. Finally, let's touch on the environment. Now, to many folks out there, this isn't a factor used in their car buying decision. So if it's not a factor that you use, no worries. That said, there's a lot of misinformation out there and often it seems to be used as a way to justify not making the switch over to electric. You'll hear things like electric cars only run on coal, which if you simply look at the United States energy mix is far from the truth. Now, sure, in states like West Virginia, unlike the vast majority of states, most of the electricity comes from coal, over 90%. And yet still in West Virginia, on an annual basis, gasoline power cars emit about 25% more emissions per year versus an all electric car. In fact, if you look at the total life cycle emissions of a vehicle, including production of the car and battery, in exactly zero states is a purely combustion engine the option with the least emissions. Data from 2009 shows a mix of electrics, plug-ins, and gasoline hybrids being the cleanest option depending on the state. If you look at a map of annual emissions by vehicle type, using today's emissions data, electric cars have the lowest annual emissions by far in most states, while hybrids are the best in a few states. And if power were to come from solar or other cleaner sources, studies show this map would go completely electric. So as the grid improves in emissions, so do electric cars. So really, the challenge with emissions with electric cars isn't the source of the energy, which will continue to improve, but rather the size of the battery. The larger the battery, the more material and emissions are associated with creating it. So if you can get a plug-in with 50 miles of range and primarily use the electric portion, or if you can get a small battery EV, say with 100 miles of range, long term it's more emissions friendly than large battery alternatives. Either way, electric wins. So hopefully this has been helpful to anyone out there potentially looking to make the jump from a combustion car to an electric car. I personally have driven and had some form of an electric car in my garage for about the past two years, and I quite enjoy them. Thank you all so much for watching. A big thank you to Progressive for sponsoring the video. And if you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below.